Welcome back. It's been a little while. Last week, my husband walked downstairs and found our lower level flooded. And we've had a, two carpeted rooms and we've had a lot of work, but we're glad to be back with you. It's a wonderful world, really. In spite of the fact we complain and lament and view this old world with much discontent, deploring conditions and grumbling because there's so much injustice and so many flaws, it's a wonderful world, and it's people like you who make it that way by the things they do. For a warm, ready smile, or a kind, thoughtful deed, or a hand outstretched in an hour of need, can change our whole outlook and make the world bright. Where a minute before, just things, nothing was right. Where a minute before, it's a wonderful world, and it always will be, if we keep our eyes open and focused to see the wonderful things man is capable of when he opens his heart to God and his love. There's so much good in the worst of us, and so much bad in the best of us, that how should we ever complain about the other? God bless you. Shake it off. One day, a farmer's donkey fell down into a well. The animal cried piteously for hours as the farmer tried to figure out what to do. Finally, he decided the animal was old and, well, needed to be covered up anyway. It just wasn't worth it to try and retrieve the donkey. We used to have wells like that that you could fall down. We had to pull our water out of it sometimes. He invited all his neighbors to come over and help him. They all grabbed a shovel and began to shovel dirt into the well. At first the donkey realized what was happening and cried horribly. Then to everyone's amazement he quieted down. A few shovels loads later the farmer looked down in the well and was astonished at what he saw. With every shovel of dirt that hit his back the donkey was doing something amazing. With every, uh, he would shake it off and take a step up. As the farmer's neighbors continued to shovel dirt on top of the animal, he would shake it off and take a step out. Up. Pretty soon, everyone was amazed as the donkey stepped up over the edge of the well and trotted off. Life is going to shovel dirt on you, all kinds of dirt. The trick to getting out of the well is to shake it off and take a step up. Each of our troubles is stepping stones. We can get out of the deepest wells just by not stopping, never giving up. Shake it off and take a step up. Remember the five simple rules for being happy. Free your heart from hatred. Free your mind from worries. Worry is just lack of faith in your Heavenly Father. Live simply. Give more and expect less. Now I have never give up. And it's quite a story. Never give up. My husband sings that song, a powerful song, Never Get Up. Jesus is coming. It's the darkest just before dawn. Never give up. On April 1 of last year, now I don't know how long ago this book was written, but anyway, there was an interesting article in the Wall Street Journal about a fellow by the name of Joe J. Walker. That year, Mr. Walker hit the big time. He became a billionaire. He founded Priceline Com, dot com, a company on the internet where you can buy your own price for airline tickets. You can pick your own price for airline tickets. And it went public in the spring of 1999, achieving a stock value of more than $10 billion. But 
What interested me most were the business schemes of Mr. Walker that failed. He tried selling retailers' catalogs through bookstores. It was a disaster. He launched his own business in Ithaca, New York. It folded. Then he put together a think tank of ideas for new businesses on the Internet. Eventually, they came up with Priceline.com. I've been thinking about this little tale, and I've come up with a question for you. It's a question everyone should answer. Have you failed enough? Most of us have not. We're so afraid of failure that we never muddle our way through to the big success. Turns out that the most successful people are generally the ones who have failed the most. Whether your idea of success is Bill Clinton or Bill Gates or Bill Graham, success usually lies at the far side of failure. Take Walt Disney, for example. He was fired by a newspaper because, now get this, he lacked ideas. After that first failure, he proceeded to go bankrupt several times before he finally built Magic Kingdom. Babe Ruth struck out 1,330 times. Of course, he also hit 714 home runs. But for every home run, he struck out twice. R. H. Macy failed seven times before his store in New York caught on. And there's Macy's all over today. We have one in Birmingham. I have some friends and business associations who are writers. Being a writer sounds like a get kind of glamorous, doesn't it? Actually, it's a lot of work. How do you get to be a writer? One definition holds that you are an honest-to-goodness writer once you have accumulated 200 rejection slips. You can't call yourself a writer until you failed enough. But what would you call English novelist John Creasy? He accumulated 750 rejection slips. Then he published 564 books. Perhaps you've read some of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. You may not know that the original manuscript was rejected by 80 publishers. There's no market for it, wise editor said. But the poor author didn't have the good sense to give up. Since no publisher would take it, they had to publish it themselves. It made millions. So, I've been thinking about failure. One verse in particular keeps coming to my mind. Though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. But the wicked are brought down by calamity. Proverbs 24:16. Now, you might expect that the Bible would say something more like this. The wicked man falls seven times, but the righteous man stands upright. But no, that's not what it says. The word of God says that a righteous person falls seven times, but every time he falls, he gets back up. My husband has told me many times, the time will come when we'll fall no, rise to fall no more. And this man, he gets back up, dusts himself off, and presses on toward the goal. That, my friend, is the secret of success. Charles was 24. Thomas was 67. The young man ran about frantically, trying to find his father. Finally, he came upon him, standing near the fire, his face ruddy in the glow, his white hair blown by the December winds. My heart ached for him, Charles Edison said. He was 67, no longer a young man, and everything was going up in flames. He spotted me. Charles, he shouted, where's your mother? I don't know, Dad, I said. Find her. Bring her here. She will never see anything like this again as long as she lives. The next morning... Walking about the charred embers of all his hopes and dreams, Thomas Edison said, There is great value in disaster, 
All my mistakes are burned up. Thank God we can start again. Three weeks after the fire, his firm delivered the first phonograph. You just can't get a good man down or a good woman. Take my wife, for example. She's never given up on me, no matter how many times she has failed to reform me. God hasn't given up on me either, and he certainly hasn't given up on you. So never give up. Sir Winston Churchill, aging and sickly, was once asked to give the commencement address at Oxford University. He gave perhaps the shortest commencement speech of all time. You can't believe what he said. It's, it, the man who had almost single-handedly inspired and cajoled England to enter, to endure, and to win the war, World War II, against Hitler, tottered to the podium. Hanging his cane on the desk, he peered at his young audience through his thick, bushy eyebrows set his famous jaw and exclaimed, Never give up! He took a step backward and surveyed those eager young faces once again. Reaching into, his, into some great inner reservoir, Sir Winston's legendary voice rose in intensity, Never give up! After an extra long pause, he roared, Never give up! He didn't. Then he took his cane and shuffled back to his seat. Stunned, the graduates sat in silence. Then the applause began and ended in a thunderous standing ovation for the old lion. From the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona comes a beautiful story of triumph over failure, of falling and rising again. No one remembers the runner who came in first that day. The runner we remember is Derek Redman, a sprinter from Britain. Derek ran in the men's 400 meter semifinals. This was a vindication of sorts. Four years earlier in Seoul, Korea, we lived there for a few years, just minutes before running the 400, he had pulled his Achilles tendon on the warm-up track so he couldn't run. Now life was offering him another chance. The gun sounded and the runners were off. But only 150 meters into the race, Derek's hamstring in his leg popped and he fell to the ground in agony. Officials ran onto the track with a stretcher. He waved them off, struggled to his feet, and began hopping inches at a time down the track. Suddenly, a man <laughs> leaped out of the stands, over the railing, onto the track, ran to Derek's side, and threw his arms around him. Together, they hobbled the last 100 meters to the end. It was Derek's father, Jim Redmond. He had sacrificed much to get his son to the games. Five minutes later, father and son walked across the finish line, and 60,000 people <coughs> gave them a standing ovation. When asked about it later, his father said, We had an agreement he was going to finish the race. This is his last Olympics. He trained eight years for this day. I wasn't going to let him, I, was, I wasn't going to not let him finish. The Bible says, though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. So never give up. Angels are watching you. All heaven is rooting for you. And your heavenly Father is waiting to wrap his arms around you and walk beside you to the finish line. Commit your life to him and resolve that you will keep on keeping on and trust that he will never let you fail. Isn't that a beautiful story? Never, never give up. God bless you. Mm -hmm.